Welcome to Echevarria Travel, where we deliver all destinations from pole to pole. Whether it's tickets to a local event, a group bus trip, air travel for families, or cruises, we are here to lighten the load and take the stress out of planning your trip. We offer excellent travel packages for everyone, and we specialize in providing travel assistance to the special needs and disabilities community. Echevarria Travel provides education and information on traveling with medical conditions and accessibility options in airports, on cruises, and in foreign countries. Before you give up on taking that dream trip because you have special needs that seem to make it too difficult, please contact us for a consultation first. Echevarria Travel's award-winning founder, Cheryl Echevarria, loves to travel and has personally overcome the challenges of traveling with blindness and special medical needs. Call us today at 631-456-5394 for a free consultation about your trip and explore the world with Echevarria Travel. Good morning, everybody. This is Cheryl Echeverria of Echeverria Travel, and you're listening to Talk Travel with Cheryl. Also, remember, this is coming to you on YouTube, so remember to hit the subscribe button below and keep following us. All contact information and description of this presentation will be uh, there as well as on my blog. Uh, if you're following us for the first time, I do a weekly talk show with travel partners from the industry, everything from cruise lines to excursion companies, tourism boards, and also being part of Business Network International or BNI. I alternate with my travel partners, uh, bring them on, because as you know, nowadays, many businesses are on social media. We don't have a corner business anymore, or the strip mall, most of us are are networking online or, or social media and you get a chance to meet some of these great business owners that can either help you locally here in Central Florida and a lot of them will help you nationally and also internationally. So take a look at our archives and uh, today I have a very special guest. Many of you enjoy cruising or know about cruising or want to try cruising but many people don't know about river cruising, especially here in the United States. We have some great rivers with the history of our country and a uh, great travel market by car, especially with the new normal people. Do you not want to fly or you just love the United States and want to stay within the U.S.? So today my special guest is Mr. And I, I want to get his uh, last name correctly. Don't mind my looking at my cell phone for a minute because I always get it wrong. Uh, Mr. Adam Owich from American Queen Steamboat Company and Victor Victory Cruise Line. And a little bit about him. He is married to his lovely wife, Kelly, and they live in South Florida been with American Cruise uh, and Victory since March of this year. He's a licensed private pilot and a USCG licensed master captain uh, and also has been working in the travel industry for 31 years, mostly with American Airlines and Silver Seas Cruises. Without further uh, doubt, an introduction, Mr. Adam, I'm sorry, Peter Adam Owich. I'm sorry, I want to call you Adam and not Peter. I apologize for that. Welcome to Talk Travel with Cheryl. How are you today? Good, Cheryl. Don't worry about it. 99% of the people that I talk to, I'll just, I'll respond to almost anything and Peter's just fine. Okay. <laughs> so. um, for, like I was mentioning, a lot of people know about river cruising in Europe or the mass market cruise lines, but they're not very familiar with American cruising. And it's been around a long time. 
and especially with the history and also the classic of the steamboat. I mean, I fell in love with steamboats with um, Mark Twain and Gone with the Wind and all that, you know, that Southern hospitality on the, the, that I have in my mind. And I'm so glad you're here to educate all of us about that. It is a great history, and it is a fantastic way to see this wonderful country of ours. Um, you know, a lot of folks are aware of uh, the, the stories, but it's just something else to get out there and, and experience it on your own, you know? So that's something we like to bring to the table, is the ability to even, you know, share that with multi-generational groups where they can share their, their love of this country and the boats and the rivers with uh, their youngsters and bring them, you know, a little bit closer to our country and our histories. So it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, exactly. And before I go on, I want to hope and wish that your employees and people that are out of the Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas area are safe after that Hurricane Laura hit yesterday. And it's a terrible thing. So we, we say God bless and hope all your, the people within your company are safe and well. Thank you very much for that thought. It's very kind of you. Um, we haven't heard any, um, any bad damage reports or any, any problems with our staff as of yet. Um, we know that their reports are still coming in, but it's, it's a scary thing. I mean, we're in Florida, so we recognize the power of these, these storms really do have. And, you know, you really do want to make sure you're protected and safe when you're looking at that. So thanks for thinking of our crew. Because they I, are I'm still employees. pretty new to Florida myself. I've only been here since 2016. You are originally from up north in Connecticut as well. How long have you been here in Florida? I came down here in 1986 for a one-year job transfer with American Airlines, and I never left. Ah, <laughs> so, okay. uh, it, the place grew on me. Uh, um, I got to enjoy being down here and, you know, traveling and, you know, from here. There's so many good places you can go to visit. And uh, my wife is actually from the Bahamas. So, you know, we both have awesome. deep ties right down here in this area. So, That's you know, it's been great. working out great. <laughs> now, I hear you have a presentation for all of us, especially on the new safety protocols and all that. So I'm going to let you... Yeah take over and you should be able to share your screen. If not, I will uh, give you those options to do so. So let me know if you're able. Uh, go ahead and if you could go ahead and enable screen sharing for me. It should be on there, but if I have to change you over to host, let me know. So you should be able yeah, to. Yeah, please, please go ahead and switch it over. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's see, chat, chat, chat. Make and you know most folks who have, uh, who have while you're working on that folks who have heard about us may not realize that they've already been on one of our ships um, so that's kind of like one of the little surprises in the presentation okay well I say made you host so you should be able to share your screen if you need to yep. and let's see how does that look it's coming up it's coming up there you go we're all there. Okay. Perfect. So you can see the screen okay and you can still hear me? Oh, yes, sir. I can. Thank you. Well, that's good. Uh, sometimes I don't get this right either. So <laughs> it's a wonderful it was thing. so new to everybody. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are our two overnight brands, American Queen Steamboat Company and Victory Cruises. Uh, most people don't realize that we're actually part of a much bigger company called Hornblower Holdings. And besides American Queen Steamboat Company and Victory Cruise Lines, um, you may have already been on one of our boats. If you've been on an Alcatraz cruise or a Niagara Falls cruise, went out to the Statue of Liberty, maybe did one of the dinner cruises on any of the 70 destinations we serve that way, you've been on one of our boats. And I have hosted a group on the one that goes to Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. So we have used, uh, have, have done them when we lived in New York. So they're a great company. And um, we've also got a couple other divisions that uh, involve 
uh, ferry service in the U.S., as well as a um, military marine global consulting firm. So all totaled, when you look at our operation, including American Queen and Victory Cruise Lines, we're operating well over 100 vessels daily in the United States, which makes us the largest American cruise line by a factor of like four or five times above our competitors. So big, big company, good financial backing and standing. And, but the only one we're gonna be worried about today is gonna to be American Queen and Victory Cruise Line. Collectively, we call that the overnight division, okay? So first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the big elephant in the room, which is what are you doing as a response to COVID? Because everybody's concerned about that and we're concerned about the health and safety of our guests and of our crew members. So we've increased sanitation of all contact services like handrails, tables, chairs, desks, anything that people would touch on board is going to be um, cleaned on a regular basis with EPA approved solutions. We are not only going to clean out um, the, the, the regular public areas on the vessel, but also the guest areas on the vessel by doing a regular cleaning, then disinfecting all the surfaces, and then using a fogging material that's EPA approved in the public areas and in the guest rooms. So all together, the guest rooms and the public areas on the, on the vessels are, are very, very, held to a very high standard, probably one that may even exceed most people's homes because not a lot of people do the EPA fogging in their own home as well, okay? So we want to make sure that it's safe and secure for everybody, our crew and our guests. Some of the things that we're doing in addition is the days of running down the, the, the dock and jumping on the boat and going cruising are pretty much over for us. What's happening now is we include a pre-cruise hotel with all of our voyages, which gives us a chance to take a look at folks 24 hours before they board the vessel, do a uh, pre-cruise screening and temperature check. And if something is um, uh, concerning, we have that 24 hours before the guest even gets anywhere near the boat to get them to a U.S. medical facility for further evaluation. When they're boarding the vessel, we now have thermal cameras set up at the boarding gates that will take a picture of everybody's thermal signature as they board. So if once you swipe your card, you get identified, you go through the camera, and we can match up those pictures with the guest. So let's say that Peter gets on the boat on day one of the cruise, looks fine. Day two, still looks good. Day three, all of a sudden, he's starting to look a little warm. And day four, you know, he might have a fever. Well, on day three, we're going to pull Peter aside and say, let's chat. How you feeling? You know, what, is there anything going on we should be aware of? We also have quarantine rooms on board all the vessels, and we can do telemed conferences with our healthcare professional that's on board and a shoreside medical facility. Now, that, that is true for whether it's a COVID problem or if it's any other health-related problem, okay? So if something happens on board, we're in a position to really get professionals to evaluate it and take appropriate steps as needed. Now, one thing that really separates our cruises from maybe the blue water cruises you may have been on is if you've ever been on a blue water cruise and something made you feel ill, you probably either had to go to the onboard physician or you had to wait until you got to the next port of call. Mm -hmm. We're cruising up a river. There are banks on both sides. If you need medical attention and it's urgent, we can pull over to a, a, any one of a number of approved landing places, get that person into a medical transport and get them to a U.S. healthcare facility where their U.S. insurance works and they're treated by U.S. doctors. And that's a really big point of... Uh, oh, definitely. I know for myself having medical issues, that's a big you know, point for myself and some of my clients, who, especially those with special needs. Not so much mobility, but if, like myself, I'm a dialysis patient, 
Mm -hmm. uh, I have people that have high blood pressure, heart issues, or even uh, cancer patients that, God forbid, they need something. Like you said, you're on two separate banks of U.S. territories, and they really don't have to worry about, oh, my God, is my insurance going to cover it? Or do I need a helicopter to get me to the next facility? You're right there. Yeah, God forbid if you were in a foreign country and you needed medical evacuation, that kind of stuff gets very expensive. And most people don't take out insurance to cover that. So you don't need to do that with us is the point. You're, you're near help if you need it, okay? Uh, we also include in all of our cruises a hop-on, hop-off shore excursion at every port that we visit, most of the ports we visit. Um, and those coaches are being sanitized just like on board the vessels as well. Um, the steps, the handrails, the seats are all sanitized every hour. And we're cutting down the number of people on each coach to, instead of full capacity, half full, to allow for social distancing. Uh, in, on the uh, vessel itself, all of the uh, communal things that you would think of, of touching, like salt and pepper shaker, sugar bowl, the menus, those are all now single use, okay? So instead of a salt and pepper shaker, you'll get single use packets of salt and pepper. Um, when you order off your menu uh, in the restaurant, we'll take the menu from you and we'll discard it. So each person only touches that menu one time, okay? If you're sitting at a bar and you wanted to maybe grab that into that big bowl of bar snacks to get a munchie, that bowl is gone now. But if you want some munchies while you're having a cocktail, just ask and we'll set you up with your own personalized bowl. So there are modifications being done on board, but it's not really impacting the quality of the product that we're producing. As a matter of fact, in some cases, it's actually really enhancing the, the product that we're, we're giving our clients, okay? If you ever wanted to see everything that we're doing, you can go onto our website and just click on the Safe Cruise Ashore button and there'll be a whole packet that comes up. Cheryl, if you wanted it on, on the travel agent side, you can get a whole brochure that you can share with your clients uh, through the travel portal, okay? That's great so, to know, thank you. Plenty of good and stuff. And I'm also constantly sharing your YouTube videos and lovely photos that uh, you guys offer to us to share with our clients as well. Fantastic, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about who's on our boats. 10,000 baby boomers retire every day. <laughs> More than half of them don't have passports. So there's been a significant interest in river cruising, especially since COVID. But the baby boomers have been really driving uh, the demand because of so many people retiring. Uh, we get a lot of European cruisers who have been there, done that, and they don't want to put up with an international flight anymore. Uh, but they're looking for authentic experiences, you know, enriching experiences that actually make them feel good about themselves and good about their country and where they live. A really strange thing has happened this year, and it was something we didn't expect. When the schools shut down and everybody went to homeschooling, one of the things that suffered was the children's field trips, okay? Yep. So exactly. what, we're, what we're finding is a lot of families nowadays, a lot of multi-generational travel, are taking their children with them on the cruise so that they can go and share some of the important historical sites like the Civil War battlefields and, you know, other places like Memphis and the history of, of music and rock and roll and things like that. So we are getting some folks doing that. But the big things are really where our ships are in the U.S. are the Mississippi River, the eastern seaboard, and the western seaboard of the U.S. So we're drive market for most people. If you don't want to get on a flight, you really don't have to. Mm -hmm. if you and want, most of your stops as well are along the Amtrak as well as Greyhound bus. Sure, sure. If you wanted to do, for example, um, we're in Florida, so I think in terms of Florida, but you could apply this almost anywhere. If you wanted to do a New Orleans to Memphis cruise, you could basically drive to New Orleans, park your car, get on the boat, do the cruise up the river, take Amtrak from Memphis down to New Orleans, 
pick up your car and drive home. Exactly. So it's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that when you're on board our ships as versus, you know, a, an international product, everybody speaks English. We're using U.S. dollars. And we've already talked about this, but it's close proximity to U.S. healthcare. The other thing is that um, if you've ever been on a boat and you tried using your cell phone, you may have gotten knocked with a huge roaming fee. You don't get that on us. You're cruising by U.S. cell towers. So your phone works the same way it would at home. So it's pretty easy. Good. Our crew are U.S. citizens born and raised in the U.S. Unlike some other companies that hire contract employees for six months and then they go back to their country of residence, um, these folks are just like you and me. They work full time and they're U.S. citizens. And that's really good because a lot of them grew up on the river and they know the river and they can impart their local knowledge to guests while they're cruising. So really big piece. Okay. I have a question in reference to that, uh, and it, yeah. that is awesome. I mean, I know sometimes when I've done the mass market, and sometimes there's a language barrier, but uh, where I live here in Central Florida, I have a lot of Hispanic people. Do, do your employees also offer uh, Spanish or translation or, or anything like that to help out clients that are not born uh, with English as their first language? We have a lot of people that have uh, two languages or more. Um, so it's a mix just like you would find here in uh, any major metropolitan city. Awesome. So there, there's a, a big cultural mix on board. And I'm sure that someone who spoke another language, um, you know, especially one of the big ones like a French or uh, a Spanish or a German, they would find someone who could probably uh, speak the same language on board. Spanish, awesome. almost a given. Okay. Thank you. No, my pleasure. So uh, you really do get a different feel on a, a paddle wheeler than you do on any other boat, all right? And I think this is important because the paddle wheelers really fit the destination. There are certain boats that work with certain destinations. If you're off the Amalfi coast of Italy, you probably want to be on a Silver Sea ship or a seaborne ship because that fits the destination. If you're cruising the Caribbean, you probably want to be on a Windstar sailboat because that fits the destination, the whole, you know, the, the feel of sailing in the windwards. Paddle wheelers belong on the Mississippi, and this is really the key to having a terrific vacation is being in a setting that fits where you're going. So we've got four paddle wheelers, the American Queen, the Duchess, the Empress, and the brand new Countess. The people on board are what you would expect to find on us, okay? In the Mississippi River and its tributaries, usually age 62 and up. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, a little bit younger, 55 and up, okay? But they are well-traveled. They are very well-educated. They've been on other cruises for the most part, but we do get a good mix of people who are first timers. And if you look in the, these photos, this is what people look like on board. We don't have any formal nights. You know, you don't have to dress up and get worried about your picture being taken. We are a casual atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got a collared shirt and slacks on for dinner, you're fine. You know, you don't have to dress up for us. If you wanna dress up for yourself, that's up to you. All of our cruises include a pre-cruise hotel night. So while, you know, you, Cheryl, you're going to have to work with uh, everybody to get their air to the destination and their mm -hmm. transfers from the airport to the hotel. But then we take over, okay? Once they get to the host hotel, they register with our folks. You'll get your cruise documents and do an initial medical screening. Uh, we will let you enjoy your, st your stay in the destination city for the first night. Next morning, we'll include breakfast. Once you check out of your room, you leave your luggage in your room and our crew will go into your room once you've checked out, take your luggage and put it directly into your cabin on the vessel. So you don't have to lift any luggage yourself, okay? We do the embarkation transfer from the host hotel to the ship. 
so that everybody gets to the ship at the same time and you can enjoy the surroundings beforehand. The food on board is excellent. There's just no other way to put it. Mm. From a silver sea, I had pretty high expectations. And I got to tell you, that I was blown away. It is regional. It is fitting with the destination. So in the Mississippi, you'll see a lot of, of Creole and Cajun cuisines, a lot of shrimp and things like that from the Gulf. And then when you get up into the Pacific Northwest, you'll have more what's uh, up there like Dungeness crab and more salmon dishes, but consistently it's fantastic. We have a 24 hour room service that is complimentary. If you are vegetarian or vegan or gluten free, we can accommodate that for you. And there's always at least one other venue on board the vessel besides the main restaurant where you can go for dinner, which offers a different view of the ship uh, and a different dining experience. So great choices on board for the food. When you're on board, all your sodas, your specialty coffees and teas are included. We also do something that we think is pretty cool. Um, we noticed a while ago that people were walking around with these plastic water bottles and we started adding up how much, how many water bottles were ending up in landfills and God forbid in the waterways. And we came up with a great solution. So now when you check into your room, you get one of these um, 20 ounce American Queen insulated bottles, okay? They're stainless steel. They're great bottles. and they last all day. You can put something cold in there or hot and they'll last for hours. And every deck and every public area has um, purified water stations where you can fill it up with purified water and that's absolutely no charge. And at the end of the cruise, you get to take the bottle home with you as a, a souvenir of your trip, okay? So, and that way, we're really saving the environment that we're showing people. So it was kind of a no-brainer. It makes a lot of sense, and we're happy to do it, okay? Now, if we also serve beer and wine with dinner. If you wanted to have a more robust experience, you could get the, do the beverage package, which is probably the least expensive beverage package in the industry today. Okay. Entertainment on board is second to none. We actually recruit from Broadway. Uh, they've been dark this year, so we've had uh, really our pick of the litter, so to speak. And the entertainment on board for the show people is absolutely fantastic. In addition to the regular entertainers, we bring on specialty entertainers depending on where we are. So if we're on the Mississippi, we'll bring in maybe uh, a gentleman that talks about the Civil War as a, a historical reference. We'll bring on a gentleman that will do Samuel Clements, A Night with Mark Twain, uh, in period. Uh, and if we're in the Pacific Northwest, we'll bring on representatives from the First Nations tribes to share their experiences and to provide a little bit more flavor to the experience that you've got on board the vessel. There's also one really important gentleman, and that's the gentleman in the bottom center of your screen. And he's called the River Lorian. Think about river and historian and mash them together and that's the River Lorian. His job is to mingle with our guests and provide lectures about steamboating, about the history of the river, about why we navigate the way we do. He'll take folks up into the pilot house so they can see the captain, you know, in their environment and describe how we navigate that way on the rivers. In general, he's there so that our guests can pick his brains about any topic related to steamboating or the history of the river that we're in. And they are fantastic about it. Um, I really think they're one of our secret gems. Now, when we get to a port, we've got um, these buses that are liveried the same way as the boats. So they're hard to miss. They look just like the steamboats. What happens is as we're cruising up the river, We've got five of these coaches following us along on the riverbanks. And when they get to the destination city, these folks will be there exclusively for our guests. We consider the drivers and the crews on these buses to be the same as our crew on board the ship because our guests will see the same people every day. And they, they get to know them and they feel very, very comfortable with them. 
So these um, coaches will go through a hop on, hop off routine through every destination. And uh, everybody will get a map the night before as, long, as well as a little briefing about what the town looks like. So this is, for example, Natchez, Mississippi. You can see where the bus will go and the stops are clearly marked out on the map. If you wanted to get on the, on the hop on, hop off bus and ride up to stop number four and then walk to stop number nine, you can do that. You can get off at every stop if you wanted to, or you can do pick and choose. Now, you see how there are red stars near the majority of these um, uh, destinations? Yeah. Those are places that have an admission fee, but is included for the American Queen Steamboat Company guests. So if these folks are charging a fee, you just show your card and you're on in for nothing. Okay. The other thing worth mentioning is you see where the boat comes in by the Mississippi River and how the first hop on hop off bus stop is up at the visitor center. If we have folks with uh, mobility requirements, we actually have golf carts on the boat that we could take them in golf carts from the boat right up to the to the bus and the buses are ADA accessible. So awesome. with, that is great. I was going to ask about that, but mm -hmm. thank you for, for putting that in. Yeah, we don't want to see anybody not get a chance to enjoy the destinations and, and have a, a great experience while they're with us. Okay. Now we've got a couple special voyages that focus on different features of what we're taking people to see. Um, Rhythm of the Rivers is all about music. We do culinary and cocktail cruises like when we're up in the Ohio River. We do bourbon cruises that call on most of the bourbon distilleries that are in close into that area. And we bring people on that will talk about the history of bourbon and how to cook with it and you name it. So it's all focused on the spirit. But we've also got great history and culture with the Civil War, with um, places along the way that uh, have played into the American experience like Lewis and Clark. Um, we also do community outreach, particularly for the Susan G. Komen, who has their own cruise with us, and the American Heart Association, which has their own cruise with us. We focus on giving back to those organizations, as well as community and special events right around the holidays. Okay, so let's take a peek at some of the places we go. First off, we're up in the Pacific Northwest, and we are doing the Columbia River from Clarkston down to Vancouver, Washington. This is tracing the footsteps of Lewis and Clark. It's a fantastic itinerary. And if you can do it, I would say, be real about it and do the, 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 the Clarkston to Portland, Oregon cruise because that really recreates the footsteps most likely, okay? Here, we're using the American Empress, which only has 221 guests on it. This is a great boat to be on because there are no insides whatsoever. Every accommodation is an outside stateroom. Every accommodation comes with a Keurig coffee maker and uh, a little breakfast area so mm. that you can enjoy that. It's done up in a gold rush type of uh, decor. And you can see what it looks like here, but it's, it's very, very elegant, very accommodating, and is a great place to have your vacation in this part of the woods. Our bread and butter cruises are really the Mississippi River though. And we do a couple of different things here with three of our boats. So we're doing the traditional New Orleans to Memphis. Pick a topic, boy, you're gonna be happy on this cruise because whether it's cooking, you've got Cajun and, and you've got Creole cooking, if it's going to be history, you've got the, um, the history of the South along with the Civil War and a number of other features. If it's going to be music, my gosh, here you've got Zydeco, jazz, Dixieland, rock and roll, blues, you name it, somebody's going to be happy on these cruises. And you get to see some places that you might have never seen, like the most haunted mansion in the United States, mm -hmm. which is actually in St. Francisville. <laughs> So if you're outgoing and you're not afraid of that ghost, go ahead and challenge yourself. <laughs> we also do the Upper Mississippi. 
So we're going from St. Louis up to Minneapolis. And you can actually take an excursion that goes all the way up to the headlands of the Mississippi River. This is the land of you know, Mark Twain and the lore that you grew up with reading as a child. And it's a fantastic place because you don't have as many levees as you do on the southern Mississippi. So you get these great vistas off the side of the boat. And you can go to Hannibal, Mississippi, or Hannibal, Missouri, um, as well as some of the other places that are highlights along this river, including the largest mall, the Mall of the Americas, is up just near Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So, fantastic spot. If you wanted to really go full experience, you can do a back to back with the upper Mississippi and the lower Mississippi. So, you do the entire Mississippi River. We also do the tributaries of the Mississippi. And here's where you get into um, some of the specialty places. For example, when we're doing the cruises that go up into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that's where you're getting the bourbon cruises. That's where you're doing the Kentucky Derby, which you know didn't run this year because of COVID, but it is going to run next year. Mm -hmm. And space on that, if, you, if you're thinking about it, I'd say, you know, think about it a little faster. Yeah, they're going fast. I've seen it, and uh, not just you, but a lot of the uh, tour companies that specialize in the Derby, they are selling out because of what happened this year. Yeah, it's very, very popular. And a lot of people that, don't forget too, a lot of people that were scheduled to go with us elected to take a future cruise credit, and they've already booked for 2021. So while you think you may have a lot of time, the reality is you may not have as much time as you think. So um, get something on the books because if you need to change it, that's a lot easier than being disappointed to begin with. Okay. By the way, this air part of the river is where we also do our barbecue challenges. So um, we go and connect with the top pit masters in the country and we will pit their skills against the skills of the culinary team on board our ships. And guess who gets to be the judge of which one is better? We do. You do. Our guests <laughs> do. <laughs> but we've also got barbecue cooking demonstrations on board, and we bring on uh, the head of the Florida Barbecue Association as a uh, kind of MC. So they're great fun, and I would tell anybody that's interested in, in cooking, go for it. Okay. The American Queen is our flagship. This is the largest paddle wheel steamboat ever produced in history. And she is exactly what you'd expect. She's elegant. She is timeless. There are great touches and nods to steamboats of the past or history all throughout the vessel. For example, the theater is modeled after Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. And the main dining room that you see here is modeled after the grand dining room in the J.M. White steamer, which was the big steamer in its day. If you look at the side of the boat, okay, what you'll notice is that all those um, balconies are open. And what typically happens is when you check into your accommodation, you'll have a doorway that also opens up onto these uh, side decks. We put out two chairs and a table. Most people will sit out there and have cocktails and just mix and mingle with people who are walking around the ship. It's a really friendly vessel. Everybody gets to make new friends on board. Okay. A little bit smaller is the American Duchess. Now, this vessel only accommodates 166 guests, where the American Queen was a quintessentially elegant riverboat. This is more of a boutique style European boat. And you can see the differences in, in the photos. But one thing that's worth mentioning is if you look at the photo on the lower left, that is one of our loft suites. At 550 square feet, these suites are the largest on the Mississippi. You've got a great living room downstairs with a couch that folds out into a queen bed. And then upstairs, you've got a, a, a large bed, bedroom area. There is a full marble bathroom upstairs, as well as a second full bathroom downstairs. And the windows looking out on the side of the boat are actually floor to ceiling, almost two decks high. So for someone who wants a little touch of luxury, 
this is a great choice. Our biggest disappointment this year was this boat, the American Countess. She is brand new. And we were gonna christen her on April the 6th. We actually went out and, uh, you know, it's, it's a Mississippi boat. So, you know, you don't christen it with a big bottle of champagne. We went out and got a big bottle of Tabasco. <laughs> <laughs> and we were ready to crack it across the bow and send it on our way. And uh, unfortunately, COVID had different plans. So we had to postpone the christening and the first cruises, unfortunately. So we were very disappointed about that. But the good news is she's spiffed up, brand new boat, ready to go. So as soon as we could start sailing again, she's we're going to crack a bottle of something across it, whether it's bourbon or champagne or Tabasco, and we're going to get her going and start taking people for the voyages of their lifetime. Okay. Now, I want to shift gears away from American Queen for a little bit and talk about our sister company, Victory Cruise Lines. We've got three boats that are involved with Victory Cruise Lines. Victory 1 and Victory 2 that you see here are identical in every way, shape, and form. The big difference with the Victory Cruise Lines uh, boats is that because they are doing specialty cruising, we also include a full alcoholic beverage package on for all our guests. So this is an open bar type of boat. What you see here are all outside cabins that have a lot of light coming into them because they've got those great windows that uh, really open up the rooms. It's an elegant interior the way you would expect it from us and is a fantastic way to explore the coastlines of the United States. So where's the boat going? Well, we are doing the Great Lakes. We cruise all five Great Lakes, okay? Going from Chicago all the way through to Niagara Falls or Toronto. And we're doing that with both boats. They're nine day cruises for the entire summer season. And here you get to see some great destinations. Like uh, you can do Cleveland for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can physically walk down the dock to where the Cleveland Browns play. Uh, for a football game, uh, but then we're exploring <laughs> Manitoulin Island, uh, which is tons of history and just oodles of, of, you know, things that people that are interested in this area would want to see, as well as Mackinac Island, which is no buses, no cars at all. So remember when I said we do those hop-on, hop-off buses at most of our destinations? This is one of the ones we can't because there are no motorized vehicles on the island. So what we do instead is we take every one of our guests on a horse-drawn carriage ride Aww. around the island and then we take them to the Grand Hotel uh, where they can enjoy the grounds of the Grand Hotel and have a big lunch there uh, and then just stroll around, get some fudge, enjoy the island. Uh, it's a great spot. Okay. Anyhow, after the summer season, we're going to come up through the St. Lawrence Seaway and into New England, where we will do some fantastic cruises. Now, Cheryl, you and I talked about these earlier. These are going out of Boston, and being from the New England area, I know how special these cruises are. Oh, yes. They're the real hot spots. So they're doing Provincetown, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, two destinations in Maine, before going into New Brunswick where you would disembark or embark on the next one, okay? Fantastic cruises, really the gems of the area. They'll then come back down the coastline and um, we'll re-enter the Florida market. Now, the beginning of the year, which I kind of skipped over because I started us in, in the Great Lakes, the beginning of the year is the boats are gonna be right down here in the Savannah and Jacksonville area. So to start things off, we're going to cruise out of Jacksonville and Amelia Island to do coastal cruising around the historical south, then over to the Bahamas, and then back up the, the uh, Florida coast. So if someone wanted to stay really close to home, if they're in the Orlando market or somewhere in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, this is a great opportunity to do a great historical cruise on one of these boats. Next spring, the I have boats. a question for you. When the, bo the boats are here in Jacksonville, will um, 
you guys offer any ship tours for us travel professionals to come on board and take pictures and see for ourselves? Travel professionals are always welcome on board our ships, not just in the embarkation cities, but at any point along the way. Okay. Having said that, COVID has changed what we can do right now. So we've kind of postponed any um, uh, ship tours until we can get this COVID situation resolved. Gotcha. Okay. So that's, that's the only, uh, you know, wrinkle in the, in the fabric right now. Okay. But yeah, we want to see you guys on the ships, just like we want to see our guests on the ships. We want you to experience it and see how special they are so that you can, you know, really be as excited as we are about the product that we offer. We want you to, we want you on board is the bottom line. Okay. Okay. So now I want to talk about what I think is going to be the hottest ship next year. And this is a brand new ship that we're going to... Gorgeous. I've seen pictures of her. Gorgeous ship. Ocean Victory. Yep. Completely different. Okay. It's an elegant expedition vessel that is going to be doing the parts of Alaska that most people do not go to. Okay. And the focus on board is really different. So instead of being on a boat where you just cruise by and you can see Alaska, this is an immersive experience that you'll be able to really experience Alaska with some of the people who are best suited to share that kind of knowledge. So right off the bat, from this picture, you can see the boat is a little different because we can actually board up to six Zodiacs at the same time, either through boarding stations in the back or on the swim platform on the stern of the vessel. The boat is all outside suites, so there's no insides whatsoever. And you'll notice from the front of the boat that it's a little bit different. Instead of the bow coming up, the bow actually slants down into the water. It's a revolutionary new design called a cross bow. And the reason for it is instead of getting that slapping as it hits a wave, the water curves up around this bow and it's a much smoother ride, okay? Inside, the accommodations are fabulous. The, the public spaces are elegant, exactly what you'd expect from us. Now, the whole idea behind this vessel is just like mama bear teaches the baby bears how things are done, that's the thought behind Ocean Victory. We're going to take our guests on a voyage with experts in the field, okay? And let those experts impart their knowledge to our guests. First off, the people that are driving the boats and are giving onboard uh, lectures and experiences are some of the marine science experts from Cal Poly State University. These folks are widely regarded as the best marine biologists in the country. So instead of having just a part-time uh, crew member driving the boat, you've got someone who really knows what they're talking about showing you Alaska close up. Along with them, we've partnered with the whale specialists at the Five Finger Lighthouse. Now, where the Five Finger Lighthouse is, is ground zero for most of the migratory whales in the area. These folks know whales better than anybody else in the world. And they are gonna be there to share their knowledge and their experience with our guests, as well as the folks at the Sitka Sound Science Center. Now, these folks are actually the people that are doing intricate um, testing of the water, the environment, you know, how things interact with global warming and the animals that live there. And our guests will actually be able to look through a microscope and see what these people are doing and learn about how the environment is changing uh, for the better or for the worse, okay? So I have to say, when a lot of people are spending money to go on expedition cruising. I mean, it's very popular now. Uh, it's popular to go to uh, Antarctica. It's popular to go to Darwin Island and to have this option for Alaska that is one of the United States here. So again, you know, when you're thinking you may need a passport for part of Canada, but um, you know, it, it is a U.S. destination. And you know what? It's close for a lot of people too. 
Uh, you will have to take a short flight to get to Sitka, but um, you know, out of Seattle, it's a quick hop, so not a big deal. Um, but you know, if you think about a Galapagos trip as a as a parallel, um, think how great a Galapagos trip would be. Think how great that trip would be if you had Charles Darwin on the boat with you, right? Oh, yeah. That's what we're bringing to Alaska. We're bringing the specialists in their field to interact with the people that are on this personal expedition trip. Now, two other folks that we're, we've got partners with are the folks at the Sitka Raptor Center. These are the people that are actually taking uh, wounded animals, nursing them back to health. And if you've ever gotten close up to these animals, you know how magnificent they really are. And because we go out of Sitka, we have the opportunity to actually spend a lot of time here at the Raptor Center. There's one other place we spend a lot of time at at Sitka, and that's at the Fortress of the Bears. Now here, these folks are taking orphaned bears and they're growing them up with a, with a look towards releasing them back into the wild. The really cool part about this place is besides getting to see these animals and talk to people who know them best, you're actually on platforms that are 25 feet away from them. Wow. You are right in their environment, right close to them. This is an unparalleled experience. And it's something we are delighted to bring to our guests. Sound great? Awesome to me. I mean, sign me up. Okay, so here's where we're going. We're going between Vancouver and Sitka, Alaska. And they go either from Vancouver up to Sitka or from Sitka down to Vancouver. If you look at the itinerary, there's only four destinations on the itinerary for a 13-day cruise. The reason for that is our captain and the crew are assigned the ability to go and find the wildlife. So the, the, the idea here is not to basically spend time in ports. The idea is to be out in Alaska experiencing it with these marine science experts, okay? So we're going to places that most people don't go. The waterfall coast of um, Admiralty Island. We're going into Tracy and Endicott Arm. Uh, if you can do the either the northbound or the southbound, I would encourage you to start in Sitka and go southbound to Vancouver because that way you get an extra day that will be spent in Tracy Arm and Ford's Terror. Um, but the rest of it is absolutely fantastic. If you're a Floridian and you just can't stand going on a trip without golf, <laughs> one of the ports we do stop at is uh, Wrangell. And that is the home of Muskeg Meadows, the only PGA rated golf course in the entire state of Alaska. So it's you can get, enough, yes. <laughs> and I played it. It's actually a, a really nice course. Oh. Um, my wife was in the cart with me. She doesn't play, but she uh, was out there for the views. We, we saw a tremendous amount of wildlife. Uh, and she was just eating wild raspberries and blueberries off the course. So wow. it's, it's a great opportunity. Okay. We also go to Fiordland, which is British Columbia's newest national park. Now, the other itinerary that we do one time is going to be truly special. It's a cruise from Vancouver into Seattle. And what's really neat about this cruise is you would never get to see a lot of these places unless you had your own private boat, okay? So I'm talking about Desolation Sound, Pender Harbor, and Alert Bay. Those are great areas where we can launch the kayaks for you and you can be out in nature just enjoying these pristine wilderness sites. Mm. This is something you just can't get anywhere else no. and we're delighted we can bring it to you. On board, like I said, it's absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what you'd expect from a quality expedition product. So let's chat a little bit about what we've got going on right now for promos, because you knew you had to have a promo in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right now, we're doing the early booking discount, okay? And if uh, people make a booking before the end of September on any 2021 cruise, you can get savings of up to $1,400 per stateroom. Wow. And I know you're thinking, wow, that's a long way off. I'm not sure I want to make that kind of a commitment. 
But we've also got a risk-free guarantee that you can change or cancel your cruise for any reason up until 120 days before cruising. So if you book something for Alaska next uh, August, you've got till three months before August, that's all the way until May, to change your mind or cancel. If you unfortunately decide to cancel, we'll give you your money back. No fooling around. So we want, it, want you to have a good cruise. We want you to think about cruising. We don't want to see you think about cruising and then find out everybody beat you to the punch. So question, on, question on the reschedule. Let's, let's say somebody wants to reschedule. How far out do you have to change that date? I mean, it, I'm sure there's a cutoff date, but how long is that normally? Normally it's 121 days, where, but we would charge a administrative fee to make that change. And what we're doing with this risk-free program is we're getting rid of the administrative charge in addition, okay? You know, what I meant was, let's say I have a cruise for, for May and I, can, I cancel in, in January or I need to reschedule because God forbid something came up in May and I can't go. How far in the future do I have to use that credit that I already paid you to move the date up to? Well, it's a sliding scale and uh, it's on the agent portal. You can go through that there. Okay. And it's also, it's also on the website for our guests, okay? Okay. When it goes, starts at 30 days up, to, then it does 60 days, 90 days, and then 121 days, okay? okay. Yes, other thing worth mentioning, the other thing worth mentioning though, is, you know, folks, come on. These days, I think if COVID has taught us anything, it really is spring for the travel insurance, okay? Uh -huh. That is so important. Uh -huh. I mean, you, it, it's the kind of thing you never think you're going to need until you need it. <laughs> now, we offer uh, travel insurance through Alliance Partners, but the, the real catch to it, okay, is that if you have a pre-existing condition, you can't wait to add that in. The insurance has to be added in within 14 days of when you make your deposit, okay? So if you've got a pre-existing condition, for gosh sake, you know, cover your bets, get the insurance and make sure you do it right when you do the booking. Um, Cheryl can walk you through that. You know, the, the prices vary depending on where you live and how old you are. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the insurance companies are really for U.S. citizens. But Cheryl's an expert in that, so I would definitely check with her on that. Um, but please include it. Cover yourselves these days. I, I'm always telling my clients to please, please, please. I've had issues. I've had clients who have had issues with and without it. And believe me, it, it's worth that, that little extra money to, to protect yourself. You may need it. You may not need it. But uh, unfortunately, there's been issues. And unfortunately... Um, with the insurance, it's been covered, and, and those that without have felt the financial hit on it. So it's definitely something you want to think about when booking any kind of travel, especially this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer these days, okay? So everybody thinks we're pretty spiffy. <laughs> I think you're great. I think you guys are wonderful and all that. I do have a question about the ships, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I know they're replicas, the, the queens, but any of them are originals that you guys have actually you know, pulled from the water and redone, or they are just all straight um, built from the ground up? Good question. Uh, and, uh, yeah, a couple of them are boats that we took apart and rebuilt. And remember we talked about the new one, the, um, uh, the one that we had this year, the American Countess. That's a great example. That used to be a Mississippi riverboat gambling cruise. And what attracted us to that boat was the fact that when you're building cruising riverboats, they're narrower than what the, the gambling boats can be, okay? So by buying that hull, we actually got a boat that was wider and offered more space for our guests. We weren't really happy with that. So what we did was we took it to a shipyard in Louisiana, split it in two and actually made it bigger. Um, and then 
redid everything on the inside from the rivets up. So sometimes what we do is we do refurbish a boat that we buy because it's a better fit for us, okay? But the American Queen, that is a, a, you know, a quintessential paddle wheel steamer. That is just a gem. And if, you're, if you've only got one time you're gonna take a river cruise on the Mississippi, I would really encourage you to make the, the, the American Queen your choice because it is the only real one that's out there. The engines are still steam powered. You can actually go down into the engine room on the American Queen. We've got an area set up where our guests can walk downstairs and talk to the people working in the engine room. You can see how they maintain the engines. They'll talk their handouts about how the engines work that you could take. So if you're mechanically inclined or you like seeing things work, it's a great opportunity. And these guys are actually oiling the engines the same 20 minutes like they did in Mark Twain's day. So it's wow. completely authentic. And mm. if you go down there, the people working downstairs love having guests, okay? Because <laughs> otherwise they're talking to themselves all day. <laughs> Where else did you get a true American history experience from, from the ship, the river, the destinations and stuff. So whether or not you're American historian or does, you know, like you said, people love our country or just want to stay local and see am amazing destinations. Um, Echeveria Travel will be looking into doing a group for 2021, as well as, of course, your, you, your friends, your family doing it on your own. And any questions and concerns that you may have for Peter goes through me because him and I are travel partners and he's here for me before, during and after your, your cruise, as well as the great customer service reps with American Queen and Victory Cruise Lines. Uh, Peter, I wanna thank you so much today for educating me and my clients. And uh, I hope to have you on in the future with some special events I'm thinking of doing with your company and some maybe some chefs that I know and enticing people to take American Queen. Thank you very much for coming on today and I look forward to working with you throughout the years. It was my pleasure. We look forward to welcoming you and your guests on board one of our beautiful ships. Have a great day and thank you again, Peter. Bye-bye. Okay.